Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Check, 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 check. Here's Cousins. This is caught. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. The Vikings first down. Diggs able to find his way free and get the catch from Cousins. First and goal at the one yard line. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Check the backer, check the backer. Now Cousins. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, fighting his way into the backfield. At the five-yard line. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Throwing, Cousins. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs, his sixth touchdown of the season as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Extra point good by Hopkins, and we are tied at seven. Seven, seven, our score after one. Each team's had it, each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. The former Pro Bowl linebacker Anthony Barr there to jar it free. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Completes it to Miller. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A good pickup, 17 yards and a bare first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. First and ten, Dukes. That's caught by the UCLA product. It's Caleb Wilson. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 14 yards into Chicago first down. And the Bears first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Back 
to throw. Dukes. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing again, Dukes. Robinson's got it. He's got the first down here inside the 30. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you can just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. of a full three yards on first down. You mentioned very early on the need to establish a running game for this young QB. They really haven't been able to do that, though, in the first half. So that means what in halftime? Adjustments, Adjustments time, right? Figure out what they are. Figure out the things that they really want to accomplish and who to run behind. Which are your better blockers? Find those guys and get in that direction. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Operating from the gun, Dukes. This will be caught inside the 10. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. He had the touchdown on the opening drive. Now he's got a first down. one in for a Bears touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Bears have taken the lead. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside, who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. A first down throw for Cousins. And Diggs has it. And past the 40. He's out of bounds. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. Cousins going to come up on a first and ten. And he's a perfect six for six here to start the ball game. Black, black. Let's get that ball, Dean. Let's get that ball right here. 
Hey, seam six. Seam six. 41's the mic. 41's the mic. <laughs> Working out of the gun. Cousins. And that is incomplete here. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. To throw his Cousins. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 44-yard line. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. First down, here's the run with Cook. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. At the Bears, 41 yard line. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Tight end right, tight end right. Four down, four down. Right down, Cam. Let's see it. Cousins gives way to Cook. He'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. We got this, we got this. Check 48 to Mike. Check 48 to Mike. Hey, watch the slant. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 15-yard line. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. We got double up, double up. Protein spill. From the red zone now, Cousins. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. 12 more yards there and another first down. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Cousins to throw it to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, but it'll be second and goal. Something we haven't really seen much of from him, an incomplete pass. Yeah, last week he finished at 70%. This week he's up over 80%. I don't know how you slow him down. Pass rush is usually the best way because a quarterback on his back usually can't complete a pass. To the air again, it's Cousins. And he's going to be swallowed up and taken down. Sacked back at the five-yard line. Ha-ha, Clinton Dix making the safety blitz look easy. Zooms in for the sack. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Check 48 to Mike. Check 48 to Mike. 
Cousins. The quick slant caught. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Stephon Diggs with his second touchdown here in this first half. As they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. Hopkins with the extra point. Elsewhere on the NFL scoreboard in Dallas. And the Chiefs have jumped out to an early lead in their ball game. That one tight to this point, and you'd have to imagine it'll stay tight throughout. That'll be taken in the end zone. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. A good start to the drive here as that's caught out on the left side. And the ball is knocked out. And the Vikings pick up the football. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. down gain of seven leaves them with a second and three but no matter how they phrase it staying on schedule staying ahead of the sticks whatever you want to call it seven yards on first down that fits the bill second quarter two minutes to go tie ball game Coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Talk about a big first half. Already has the two touchdowns, adding to his receiving total there and picking up the first down. He's coming off the line so fast. I think he's intimidating the defensive backs with his explosiveness, and he's chipping away at their confidence. First and ten, Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. The completion good for three, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Cousins toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. Third down here. There are a good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. They'll throw again. Cousins. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a minute. 
Minnesota touchdown. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes now in the afternoon as his guys are able to regain the lead. Brandon, my man, just one sentence for that one. Clinic. And that's what they've done. They lead the league in points per game this season, but it's been quick strike ability as we saw on that drive. I think they're actually intimidating defenses because they're back on their heels right away, wondering where it's going to come from, how they're going to hit them. This group is well organized, well coached, and extremely confident in what they do. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. Looking to throw, Dukes, and that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once, tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did, couldn't connect, but as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier, trying to keep him in the rhythm. Line of scrimmage, again the 37 as they line up second and 10. To throw again, Dukes. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Operating from the gun, Dukes. He'll rifle this one deep right side. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. On fourth down, out is the punter, Cameron Johnston, to boot it away. Back deep is Tavon Austin. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Taken in at the 11. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? 
you adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. A big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Jim, Jim, Jim. Christone, travel. Running from the gun, it's Abdullah pushing forward for three up to the 48. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. From just shy of midfield, Cousins. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. His big game continues. Already has a three touchdown. Grabs, tacking on some more yardage and a first down. And how precise has his route running been in this game? We just saw him get open yet again, and he's also made adjustments as the defense has tried to really stop him. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. Cousins. It's caught by Quincy Anunua. A gain of six there on first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Cousins. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And I think we've got a hold here. It's a five-yard pickup for the moment. Let's see what our referee says. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Quarterback, don't get nervous now. Leave it, leave it, bring up 48. Don't get nervous. 41 to Mike, through, through. Check, check, check 41. Here we go. Hey, check. From the gun, here's Cousins. It's complete to Diggs. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. 132 fighter. On first down, Abdullah. Kyle Fuller, the one to make the tackle. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. From the 22, Cousins. Anubis got it, complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. I don't even know why this team showed up. 
Cousins now. Now he's got it. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run. Gets him 15 yards. First and goal at the two-yard line. Jahan! Ready! They run, Adula, and he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard you down to about the one. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Second and goal from the one. Again, it's Abdullah, and he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Amir Abdullah, his fourth touchdown on the year, and the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. Extra point good by Hopkins, and the lead now up to 14. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. Mike, 54's Mike. Check, check, watch 54, watch 54. We own it. We own it. Throwing on first down. Dukes there to knock that one away defensively. Eric Kendricks. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Kill, kill, kill. Throwing again. Dukes. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. the gun. Dukes. And that is incomplete. It's always a goal and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. 
Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy, the other team's going to be unhappy. So, what do they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how do they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, that's you, partner. And they begin the drive with a new one. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. near the goal line and Cousins. They'll tussle for it and this is going to be caught. It's a gain of 16 and the Vikings have the first down as well. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Here's a duel. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Throwing on second down. Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. On third down, Cousins lets it fly for Thielen. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. Here's Sam Martin now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. yards on the return that time and the Bears take over the Bears offense ready to go for their next drive and down on the scoreboard certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive punting the football Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it and it won't help them at contract time. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Here we go on second and 12. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. It's a gain of 20 as we wind down near 20 seconds left in the quarter. This quarterback now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Operating from the gun, Dukes. He finds Robinson. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. Here we go. 
So first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, Dukes. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. Ball on the 30 as they come up, second and 10. To throw again, Dukes. They'll find Miller, that's complete. And he is in, touchdown, Chicago. Anthony Miller, his first touchdown on the year as his guys are back within a single score. Carlson now to add the extra point. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Vikings take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loved to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Here's Cousins. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Khalil Mack able to record his fifth sack of the season. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Check 31. Check 31. Hey, 32. Let's get Throwing, Cousins. He'll hit his running back, Amir Abdullah. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be third down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. The Vikings on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and nine. Working out of the gun. Cousins. And he finds McDonald. And he takes this thing way down into Chicago territory. A big play there for Minnesota. 51 yards. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. I'm coming after you. 300. Under 10. Under 10. 10. 49. Check 49. Check 49. 6-6. Bullet high. A toss to Abdullah. 
And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Again, it's a dueler. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The Vikings on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll run here. Odula. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Amir Abdullah, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. Hopkins with the extra point and a lead now up to 14. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a... Touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Check curls, check curls, check curls. Throwing again, Dukes. And he's gonna find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Operating from the gun. Dukes got a man. It's Tanyan complete. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. On fourth down, Dukes. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Back 
to throw. Dukes. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. To throw again. Dukes looking middle, and it's incomplete. Robert Tanyan was the one he was looking for. And that takes us from second to third down. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. The Bears on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and ten. the gun. Dukes. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. A good pick up there, a 22. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 35 yard line. Watch one, watch one. Operating from the gun, Dukes. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here we go. again. Dukes. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. From the gun, Dukes. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first, but at least it's fourth down. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. On fourth down, Dukes. And that is incomplete. The Bears tried it on fourth down, unable to convert. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They run the counter. It's Turner. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. They'll keep it on the ground. Turner. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. That's going to be their second. They'll be left with one more plus the two-minute warning. And we'll be back. And they're going to go with the jet sweep. This is Diggs with it. 
And he gets us down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Well, that play looks familiar because we saw them working on it in practice this week. And for a lineman trying to block on this play, they love when they get the defense moving in one direction. And when they try and change directions, it's a lot easier to pick them up and ward them off. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Check nine, check nine. Check 24, check 24. Wait, you're on the hop. They'll keep it on the ground. Turner, and this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. The good run on first down followed up by a not so good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're gonna stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Go 48. 41. I'm gonna wedge that, huh? Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> on third down. It's Turner. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. Vikings. First down. First and ten at the 16-yard line. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up play. first and ten. I can't believe they even let you play. Clock counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So for the Vikings, they improved to 5-0 now on the young season. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Chicago, they'll fall to 1-4 with a loss. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.